The, uh, of course, when you, when you have these kind of problems, one of the things you try to separate out in your mind is things you can do things about and things you can't do things about. The, 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 the process of defining a timeline, a power-up sequence, and manipulating all the switches to maybe cause a re-entry was something we could do something about. There were some problems we were worried about that we couldn't do anything about. One of them was that uh, when we had this problem, did uh, what exactly happened back there? We couldn't see. Uh, how much damage were there? D uh, did we, did we buy, for example, damage the heat shield, which was, which was around the, the, uh, the big end of the command module that, just bef and that the service module set on, or it, it was the pad actually that the service module and command module were joined on. Uh, did we damage the heat shield? Did we, is the heat, did the heat shield get too cold was another concern we had because the spacecraft was completely powered off. The, the, both of those, that concern of the heat shield, uh, we all worried about a little bit, but uh, it was nothing we could do anything about. I mean, it, it was what, how it was, there wasn't any way we could repair it, wasn't any way we could see it. We were all anxious when we finally separated with the service module because we had planned a photo sequence, a camera sequence, uh, from the lunar module, because once we separated, you could see it. And uh, it was uh, a, a lot more damage than even we anticipated uh, from that photograph. We had talked about, well, do we absolutely have to have this heat shield? And of course, the, I think the answer was yes. The, you're coming back from the, lunar, from the moon at uh, something like 25,000 miles an hour, and uh, the lunar module was not designed to, to fly through any aerodynamic conditions and not only that, not only using it as a heat shield, uh, you, you couldn't work maybe just a blunt kind of a heat shield in front of you. It was on the wrong end of you. It, it was on the front end and you, what you needed was something on the back end. So it was the, we were dependent upon the heat shield. We were, we were concerned it would have been damaged and we might get a burn through, but we were where we were. I mean, we couldn't do anything about it. All you could do is try. I, I think the thing that uh, the only comments I would have about the re-entry and the splice down was the emotional side of the, of the thing as opposed to any technical thing. It's just that we had been in this place night and day working on these off nominal checklists and timelines. You know, taking a little time out to do our income tax, but mostly just being here all the time. Uh, the emotional transition that happened once we saw those main shoots, because we had just, before you get to see the main shoots, even on a normal mission, you go through this uh, very anticipatory moment called blackout when it's at the, at the heat of the re-entry you, you lose communication and that's when the heat shield has to do its job so while the heat shield was doing its job we were sitting here in silence with just the scratch of the radio that's all we can hear counting down to when they would we would reacquire the spacecraft when it comes out of the high heating period when we require the communications to see everything is all right. Even in a normal mission, that is a very uh, traumatic moment to be sitting in silence waiting for that. Since the heat shield was of our concern, it was a tremendous traumatic moment for us. And when the clock went through zero, we always kept a countdown clock up there, up counting down to reacquisition. When the clock went through zero, we didn't require. It was uh, some number of seconds after that that we picked up the, uh, so that was a very, very uh, tense moment to have the clock go through zero. You didn't acquire. And then, uh, for, then a few seconds later to finally pick up the acquisition, which says the heat shield worked. If you didn't acquire, that, that's the first, in the, it, first clue the heat shield maybe didn't make it. So you can imagine then the next thing that happens is you, you pick up the communications from the crew that says it all went well. And uh, the next thing you see are those three beautiful big main shoots. And then, then, the, then, then your emotions just start to, uh, it's when the emotional letdown comes out of you there. It's a very dramatic sequence, even for a normal flight. If I, if I, if I reflect on the technology we had then, in terms of both the spacecraft design and the ground control design and, 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 and transition that to today, and think about, well, what could we have done in the way of implementing the technology? Uh, if you assume the spacecraft technology was the same, that is, we were where we were with respect to the spacecraft, the thing that we could have done within the Mission Control Center would have been to have automate some of this pattern recognition that I was talking about earlier, whereas certain measurements have certain combinations uh, will fail in certain ways depending on the, 
on the way that uh, they're wired through our telemetry system. One thing that could, you could have done was to uh, automate all that so that uh, any time the parameter came, any time the event happened, you could tell immediately whether it was a real problem or a, an instrumentation or measurement driven kind of a problem. We were very limited in those days, even though we had the most powerful computers in the world sitting right downstairs, uh, the IBM 360 uh, Model 75s. But in terms of today's technology, were they very limited? I mean, we used to be very proud of the fact that we had a one megabyte mainframe. That was a big online storage device, one megabyte. And uh, well, we had the only one of those in the world right here. So yes, there's lots of things we could have done that would have helped us maybe recognize the problem quicker. But in the end, uh, automation can't help you invent stuff. So we were literally inventing procedures on the spot. And uh, unless, unless you have those pre-programmed and you got all the thought paths pre-programmed, which, which humans have to do, in the end, it would not have affected the, much of the outcome of the mission. Most of that was put together by human thought and human creativity.